nucleic acids, DNA and RNA. DNA and RNA are polynucleotides. They're big. Polynucleotides are polymers. Polymers, of course, are made of monomers. So the monomer of a polynucleotide would be a nucleotide. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. First of all, DNA, the molecule involved in passing on genetic information from cell to cell, from organism to organism, the structure of which was first worked out by James Watson and Francis Crick in Cambridge in the 1950s. A momentous discovery. DNA, as you will already know, is found inside the nucleus of the cell. But you may not have been aware that this is the only polynucleotide. RNA is the other nucleotide, which can be found in the nucleolus of the cell, which you have already come across in cell structures, and on ribosomes, the site of protein synthesis. Ribosomes can be found in the cytoplasm and also on endoplasmic reticulum to make it rough endoplasmic reticulum. R -E -R. So DNA and RNA are polynucleotides, which are polymers, and the monomer of which are nucleotides. You need to know the basic structure of a nucleotide. You don't need to be familiar with the whole chemical structure of it. So it composes of three parts. Firstly, a nitrogenous base which is indicated green on this diagram. It's called a nitrogenous base or you can call it a nitrogen containing base because it contains a lot of nitrogen. A phosphate group and a sugar, sugar group which we'll look at in a little bit more detail. It's a sugar that you've already come across in biomolecules. So these monomers, nucleotide, will join to make a polynucleotide and they join between the phosphate and the sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar. It's called a phosphate sugar backbone. And the bond that you've just seen fitting in there is called a phosphodiester bond. Phosphodiester bond. It's another bond that you need to know. Let's look at DNA itself before we go into RNA. So its monomer is a nucleotide. DNA itself stands for deoxyribonucleic acid and the sugar in this case is one you have come across before is a ribose but because it's missing an oxygen on carbon number two it's called deoxyribose so it's a pentose sugar five carbon sugar deoxyribose it's got a phosphate group no more needs to be said about that and it's got a nitrogen containing base. However, there are four types of bases and therefore four types of DNA nucleotides. The first base is called adenine, A. Thymine, T. Guanine, C, so G. And cytosine, which is C. So we generally abbreviate them to A, T, G and C. Note that I have represented them with different sizes and different shapes. That will become evident later. Now the overall structure of DNA when the nucleotides are joined up to make polynucleotide is that it contains two strands or two polynucleotide chains. Here they are. Note that one goes up and one's going down. One's going in one direction, the other chain goes in the other direction. That's called anti-parallel. I can say more about that in class. And what you're familiar with is that both will spiral around each other to make the double helix shape that you will already be familiar with. If you look at this structure 
of a double helix you can actually see the nitrogen nitrogenous bases in there C and G A and T note that C is always pay over G and A is always pay over T let's have a look at these bases in a little bit more Because you know I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no trouble. I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no. The important thing about the DNA structure is the bass and how they pair. They pair by complementary bass pairing. That's the word that you will come across in several other topics in biology. Complementary. One fits with the other. One pairs with the other. One complements the other. And if you look at the structure now, you can see that G complements C. T complements A. We'll go through that in a little bit more detail now. So, first of all, A and G, they don't pair with each other, remember. But they are similar types of bases in terms of structure, shape and size. And they are called purines. The other two bases, T and C, are smaller. They're called pyrimidines. These are two terms that you should try to remember. I tend to remember that the bigger bases have the smaller word. So adenine and guanine are bigger, the smaller word is purines. And the opposite applies. Pyrimidines is a big word, smaller bases, thymine cytosine. You should also remember which bases are the pyrimidines and which bases are the purines. Difficult to remember. How I do it is that look for the letter Y. Pyrimidines, which contains the letter Y, and you find Y in thymine and cytosine. So thymine and cytosine are the pyrimidines. Now, the rules are pyrimidines can only fit with a purine. due to the nature of the chemical bonds but also because if you had a purine and a purine, purine and a purine together which are big and a pyrimidine and a pyrimidine together which are small the double helix would not be able to be stable it would fall apart so A only pairs with T G only pairs with C purine to pyrimidine a complements T, C complements G. Now they're able to maintain their pair due to bonds. These are bonds that you have come across before. Very weak bonds called hydrogen bonds. You need to know how many bonds are between A and T and C and G. Between A and T, there are two hydrogen bonds. Between C and G, there are three. The way I remember this is that C is the third letter of the alphabet. There are three bonds. So by default then, adenine and thymine, A to T, only have two bonds. So here we have adenine, phosphodiester bond, guanine, phosphodiester bond, cytosine, phosphodiester bond, and the next nucleotide, thymine, with a phosphodiester bond, and finally guanine again. Is adenine, it's quite a big base, is adenine a purine or a pyrimidine? It's a purine. And it will complementary pair with which base? Thymine. How many hydrogen bonds? Two. Now, the next nucleotide will join up along the sugar phosphate backbone with a phosphodiester bond. The next nucleotide to come in carrying the nitrogenous bases. 
cytosine. How many bonds? Three. Here comes the phosphodiester bond. Next nitrogenous base. Number of bonds. Phosphodiester bond comes in. What pairs with T? A. How many hydrogen bonds? Two. Phosphodiester bond joins up the phosphate to the next sugar. And here comes the next sugar carrying the nitrogenous base cytosine. And the number of bonds? Three. This is how we get our double helix. Composing of two complementary polynucleotide chains hold by hydrogen bonds and phosphodiester bonds. I should also add that there are further hydrogen, hydrogen bonds throughout the double helix helping to maintain its twisted shape. We don't need to know the details of this. So. The other polynucleotide chain, so the other type of polynucleotide is RNA. Now if DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid, RNA is ribonucleic acid. So the key difference first of all is in the sugar. It's still got five carbon ribose, a pentose sugar, but it's got its, all its oxygens, so we just call it ribose. It's got its phosphate group, and just like DNA, there are four nitrogenous bases. But this is where the difference comes in again. It has adenine. It has guanine. You will find cytosine. But now the difference. There is not any thymine. Instead, there's another nitrogenous base called uracil. This lends itself to a great chat up line. Since A is pairing with U, you could always say, I wish I was adenine so I could pair with U. The other difference with RNA is that it is not double helix, it composes of a one or a single polynucleotide chain, which is also going to be shorter than DNA. which will become evident when we look at how we make proteins from the genetic code and DNA. There are three types of RNA involved in making proteins. I'll name them now, but we'll look at how they're involved at another time. There is mRNA, messenger RNA. As an overview, this is the RNA that leaves the nucleus from DNA and travels to ribosomes. There is transfer RNA. This is RNA found inside the cytoplasm of which amino acids are attached to. And ribosomal RNA, rRNA, found in ribosomes. All three of these are involved in protein synthesis. And as I mentioned already, DNA, the RNA is shorter than DNA. So you should be able to describe differences between DNA and RNA. The difference in nitrogenous bases? No thymine in RNA, there's uracil. Thank you for watching.